This is question October, November 19, paper 4, variant 1, question 12. One possible nuclear reaction, there are many possible ones, is uranium, another uranium reaction, breaking into its daughter nuclei, molybdenum and lanthanum, releasing a whole bunch of other things. This is, this by the way guys, is what we call a nuclear equation or chemical equation. It's about the reaction. Lah, okay, so the data is given here. We have nucleus, the mass, the rest mass, Total mass of separate nucleons. Ooh, We've got some binding energy difference here between these two columns. We have mass defect. How? What's the difference between these two? As well as binding energy per nucleon. Wow, they did all the calculations for us. First one. Show that the energy equivalent to a mass of 1U is 934 MeV. Means when you have a 1U of object, when it's converted to energy, how much energy is that? Should be this one. But let's prove it. So we are going to use Einstein's uh, equation, E M C square, his famous one, to prove that for us. So we got to write that down. The first step, energy and mass are interchangeable. Energy, a mass can become energy. Absolutely. So we're going to write that here. So this one will be a mass. Uh. What mass shall we use? 1U. Okay, 1U. So 1U will be 1U times 1.66 times 10 to the negative 27 kg per U. That is how much each U is. Lah. So that will be multiplied by the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the power 8 square. This would give us a, a energy of about several small joules. But wait, we want it in MeV. Oh, so instead of that, okay, so we know this one will be in joules. Maybe I want to shortcut a bit. Okay, so I divide by 1.6 times 10 to a negative 19. This is to help me convert the joules to EV. And this is the amount of joules per electron volt. Okay, so then the joule and joule will cancel out, you get EV. So at the end of the day, you should get 933.75 times 10 to the 6 EV. Yay, so this is about 93, this is 3 SF, right? So you round to 3 SF, 934 mega electron volt. There we go. Make sure you know how to prove this one because they, they do ask it pretty often here and there. So once for final answer, if you manage to get through there, and one if you sub in correctly to the EMC square equation. Next, use the data from figure 2.1 to calculate binding energy per nucleon of a nucleus, uranium-235. Hmm, complete figure 12.1. I guess they want us to find this spot right here. Binding energy. What is binding energy? Binding energy is how much energy you need to separate every single nucleon in uranium-235. So, we know a hint here. We know that on this one, when they are together, the nucleus, it will have a certain mass. When you separate all the nucleons and you add them together, you have another mass and there's a difference between them. Now, the difference is due to mass defect. So this is our known as our delta M. And that is related to the binding energy. So let's convert this delta M to binding energy first for uranium-235. So 1.865, uh, this one, we're going to use this value. So let's see, binding, no binding energy, delta M, the mass effect is 1.865 U. Let's convert that to energy to find the binding energy. So binding energy, you can calculate with Einstein's equation, delta M times C squared, EMC squared. I do like that. Okay, this will be uh, delta M will be 1.865 U convert to kg. That will be 1. Point, uh, what was it again? Uh? 1.6. Uh. Eh? Hang on a second. We don't have to convert to kg because they already told us a key. 1 U equivalent is 934 MeV. Oh, bless. So we don't even need to use Einstein's equation. We already did in the first part to get a conversion factor. So if it's given to us like this, then we can use that conversion factor to calculate the energy straight away. So the binding energy here will just be a certain mass, 1.865. Keep it in use, it's fine. And that is equivalent to 934 MeV per U. Oh, I love this. It's a... Blessed to have all this already ready. Oh, wait, but this is binding energy. You want binding energy per nucleon. 
So we gotta do per nucleon. So we have to divide by the number of nucleons of uranium-235. If you already see 235 here, that means that is the number of nucleons. So we can write here 235. This will give us about 7.412 MeV. If you press calculator, I already pressed it, so I know. This, this, all these questions I need to pre-press calculator. If not, it's going to take super long just staring at me pressing calculators. Uh, so we got our binding energy, 7.412. This is the final answer. And one mark for you uh, converting mass to energy. So this kind of this working right here, that will be C1. Okay, you can do it in a separate step or all at once like what I did here. Next, nuclear number of an isotope. Rutherfordium is 267. Hey, Rutherford had an element named after him. State whether the binding energy per nucleon of this isotope will be greater than, equal to, or less than binding energy per nucleon. So we are trying to compare here the binding energy per nucleon. Now, the one thing to remember is that when your binding energy per, I guess, nucleon is higher, means more stable. And this is generally attributed to a smaller nucleon or smaller nucleon, smaller nucleus. So higher binding energy, more stable, and usually there is a smaller nucleus. So we're going to compare uranium and 267 Rutherford. This one is bigger than uranium. Oh no. Uranium is already not very steady. It's so, it's so big. Rutherford is, Rutherfordium is even bigger. So this is less stable because it is bigger in the nuclear size. Bigger, bigger, bigger. And that also means that the binding energy per nucleon is lower. So we're going to say that uh, Rutherfordium, I want you to say the whole thing, uh, less than. Uh. Okay, so we say this one has less binding energy than uranium-235 because it is bigger, is less stable, less binding energy per nucleon. Oops, forgot the per nucleon. I'm going to add that in. This is one mark. If you forgot how this looks like, go look at the binding energy graph and see. Okay, bigger elements, less stable, lower binding energy. Okay, next. Calculate the total energy released in the nuclear reaction. What nuclear reaction? Look over there, see. Oh, we're talking about this. This, this, this um, original nuclear reaction here. So how much energy is released? So one way is to calculate the mass defect. But since they already calculated binding energy per nucleon for us, we don't need to do the mass defect and calculate everything anymore. Oh, here is 7.412. So what we can do here is find the difference in the binding energy because we already know mass effect. So that is related to binding energy. So we find what is the total binding energy here. Total BE. And what is the difference with this original product? Uh, BE. And we compare both and minus. So well, let's do that and minus together. So we'll start off with this... Uh, this one first. Okay. Binding, en binding energy of molybdenum and lanthanum. So energy release, which is the change in energy. Molybdenum is 8. Is it molybdenum? Who is 8443? Molybdenum is 8443. So we write that 8.443 MeV. So it's good. We are in MeV already. Eh, but this 8443 is binding energy per nucleon. Per nucleon. We just want binding energy. So how many nucleons are there? Molybdenum has 95 nucleons. So we have to multiply by 95. Each nucleon got this energy. So in total, how much? Times 95. Lo. So it's one times 95. Because 95 is the number of nucleons that molybdenum has. Okay, moving on. So this one is... a uh, Oh, wait. Don't cross back yet. So it's molybdenum, M-O. We have lanthanum also, LA. So molybdenum has a binding energy of 
0.189. How many nucleon does it have? Ah? So times 2, what? 139. So multiply by 139. Okay, so it's lanthanum 139, molybdenum 95. Okay, I think that's all the products. Okay, now for the mother, uranium-235. Uranium-235, we calculated 7.412 as our binding energy per nucleon. And in total, you have 235 nucleons. Ah, so this is how we can minus. So we'll find a difference of about 198.536 MeV. Difference in binding energy. And this is the amount released in a nuclear reaction. Okay, so we're going to write here, I guess. I, I, I will keep 3SF in nuclear physics because there's just so many SF in these answers. Look at this. At least 3 lah. Because a lot of these got 3 ma. Okay, so we're going to write there 199 MeV. 1 mark for final. 1 mark for substituting and minusing the binding energy. Okay, last question. Oh, this one is interesting. Ooh, ooh. The nuclei in this amount, mole is the amount of substance. Nuclei in this amount of uranium all undergo reaction in a short time. Hmm, very short time. Calculate the average power released during the time of 25 milliseconds. Gotta remember, I mean, how do we calculate power? Power is the total energy or change in energy per unit time. In this case, we have to talk about total lah. Because oh, your uranium is not just one atom, but it's like many, many, uh, not atom, nuclei of uranium. 1.2 times 10 and 7. So we need to calculate what is the total energy. So let's break it down in stages. To find the energy, we need to know what is the number of nuclei. So the number of uranium nuclei. How many? Ah? Let's call this N. We have to convert 1.2 times 10 negative 7 mole. Okay, in each mole, there are uh, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 amount of nuclei per mole. Like that, I guess that's your unit nuclei per mole. This is also known as the Avogadro's constant, by the way, called the Na constant. You can find this in your data formula sheet. Avogadro's constant. Okay. This will give us a pretty big number, 7.22 times 10 to the 16. So if you draw circles, there are this many nuclei, number of nuclei in this sample. Okay, uh, and each nuclei release how much energy? Ah? Oh, each nuclei of 235 will release this amount of energy for each nuclei. So I'm going to make a little note here. This is for each New ooh, why suddenly change color one? Each nuclei of U235. If it undergoes reaction, it releases this amount of energy. So let's write it down. Oh, but maybe this is in SI unit watts. Ah. We probably need to convert your EVs to joules. So let's do this. Energy release uh, per nuclei. Let's call this E. So we already know it's 1.99 MeV, but this is times 10 to the 6 EV. You want to convert to joules for watts. So we need to multiply this by 1.6 times 10, negative 19 joules per EV. Mm, okay, then the EV, EV will cancel out. Very good. How much energy is this? Let's calculate. Mm, 3.184 times 10 negative 11. Now you can do all this in one step if you're able to. I'm just writing it out so we can see the steps of calculation. Now finally, we got number of nuclei, we got energy per nuclei. That is our values here and here. We are ready to calculate the average power. So power will be number of nuclei, each of them release a certain energy, divided by time. So that would be 7.22 times 10 to the 16 nuclei, each of them releasing this amount of power in joules. 184 times 10, negative 11. By the way, this is in joules. Divide by how, what's the time interval? 25 milliseconds. So 25 times 10, negative 3. Now this will give us a power of 9.2 times 10 
to the 7 watts. So we can write here 9.2 times 10 to the 7. Wow! Final mark. Okay. A1 is your final answer. Then the C1 will come from you knowing to substitute things correctly and you get a, a energy of 3.184 times 10, negative 11. Say, miss, if I didn't show this answer, yeah, then this one also can. La. This calculation, you show that in your working. And the firstly is the number of nuclei. That was another C1. If you show you're working for that or sub all into one gigantic equation. So to you, maybe this may not seem like a very large wattage power rating. Yeah, just times 10 to 7. But hey, dude, this is actually a super, super large power, you know? For reference, your oven that you use to bake stuff is about 1,000 watts. Very hot, oh, but only 1,000 watts. Okay. Then the aeroplane, a Boeing passenger plane flying through the sky at constant altitude. Pretty much like full cruising speed. Lah. This plane will have a power of about 7 times 10 to the power of 6 watts. And here... You have a tiny, a tiny amount of uranium-235. Let's say this, this, this person is sprinkling a few grains of uranium-235. And this is 9 times 10 to the power of 7 watts energy released in this amount of reaction. And this, this uranium-235, uh, we calculate. Uh, how, many, how, how many grams is this mole of uranium-235? Miss Lee and I, we calculated. And this is about um, 28 grams of... 20, not 28 grams. 28 micrograms of uranium-235 sprinkle down like this, suddenly release this much of power. Wow! In 25 milliseconds. The power rating is way more than you're baking your oven, way more than the plane cruising at full speed. This is the power of nuclear fission. Just a sprinkle of pure uranium. It's equivalent to a gigantic plane slamming into you. Phew! This is why I always tell people, when you're studying nuclear physics, please be aware that with great power, look at this power, with great power comes great responsibility! Exclamation point, exclamation point. So if you're dealing with uranium and anything, know that this is high power, high energy, you could kill an entire country, kill an entire planet, but know that you are responsible for whatever you calculate. So make sure if you do your calculations Exactly. You don't want anything to go wrong when you're doing nuclear physics calculations. But that's all for this question. I hope that was interesting. Help you to understand a little bit the power that is released during a nuclear fission reaction for a small sprinkle of 25 micrograms. Oh, that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.